welcome again to skill inspirational academy so far we have discussed various topics on dns then we discussed different records and further on we discuss about gtm versus dns so today topic would be based on accelerated dns resolution which is again an important topic from here our f5 dns course would be started so in this video you will come to know that how gtm will resolve dns queries based on different methods and you will see difference between gtm and dns resolution like how dns resolution queries would be resolved by gtm so let's begin so first of all you need to understand gtm resolution options before going further on labs and other parts i will first discuss gtm resolution options like how gtm will resolve queries based on different options so let's discuss let me open new tab and where we will cover this so suppose this is our gtm box okay let's say that this is our gtm box okay so whenever let's say this is our client so whenever a dns like whenever a dns query is received whenever a dns query is received by gtm so there are different methods which are available that will be resolved each queries so we have different methods discussion in detail so most important part for any gtm for any of the gtm advanced dns features to be involved in resolution the query first should arrive on listener so listener in gtm is like a virtual server in ltm box so that is important so dns query will always arrive on listener so we will have udp listener and we will have tcp listener on port 53 on our gtm box so whatever method we are using if gtm does not have listener ip then dns query will not be received so gtm listener is a special object which can resolve dns resolution intelligently so this is very important object first it will help you to resolve dns resolution intelligently okay second use case for this would be it will accelerate dns resolution if intelligent dns resolution does not happen third use case would be it will add security and it will sign responses to the query so that man in middle does not happen so this is done by dns security in gtm so this is how dns query comes to gtm and listener will resolve gtm query based on three use cases either intelligent use case dns resolution or accelerate and third one is a security so whenever a query arrives the query would be addressed by your listener so dns query will be arrived by client so query is addressed by listener and name being resolved is wide ip so we will come into intelligent versus accelerated now so let's discuss further on what is the difference between intelligent dns versus accelerated dns resolution so if we have both the features in our gtm so what is the difference between both so intelligent dns resolution is the dns re resolution when we have dns query 
arrived on listener okay it will arrived on listener then it will go to wide ip so wide ip is nothing but it is your fqdn so it matches if name is wide ip like if someone access www.google.com so thus we have a wide ip with this name if yes then intelligent resolution will happen further according to the wide ip pool versus listener pool so we will go further on detail like we have two pools like wide ip based pool or we have another pool load balancing so in this case gtm will resolve query based on multiple parameters so the parameter in intelligent dns includes various things first it will check network matrix which will will discuss further so it will go according to network matrix second one is server matrix third one is your site specific matrix so in this case dns resolution would happen intelligently based on diff parameter so we will discuss based more detail on intelligent dns and wide ip later on videos so now let's see what does accelerated dns resolution do so what does accelerated dns resolution does so in this case suppose we don't have wide ip then gtm will help gen gtm will help to resolve queries based on accelerated dns features based on accelerated dns so in this case what happens is you configure a listener first listener is mandatory whether you are using either your intelligent dns or either you are using accelerated so listener is mandatory second thing we will configure dnx express or we configure features called dns cache or we configure features called dns pool so this three four features of accelerated dns which we will i will go through flow chart which will help you to understand accelerated dns query so gtm in this case in this case gtm will help to resolve dns queries so gtm systems can accelerate based on below features so it will accelerate dns query resolution based on below features so it can define group of dns servers second thing what it can do is it is also called pool group of dns servers and it will associate it pool with listener so it will associate pool with listener we will see every topic in detail when we come across lab part so in this case when ldns query arrives so when your dns query arrives on listener so when dns query goes on listener so listener will have 
pool of DNS servers, which will load balanced. So it will have load balanced features, which will reduce load on one server. So this technique, this technique of accelerated DNS server will allow to scale based on number of DNS resolution being processed. So it will ease the pressure on one of the server depends on number of DNS resolution happening per process. So as more queries are processed, additional backend DNS servers can be added. So we can add in pool of DNS more servers. So in this case, F5GTM will be using technique called monitors to see which server has more load or which servers is down. So we have technique GTM used monitor technique, which is same as health monitor technique as a method to ensure that DNS server are working properly. So you need to understand this monitor technique. If you're working on LTM already, then health monitor is nothing, but it will monitor the health of backend server, whether it's up or down. So that's an advantage of health monitor. If one of the server is down, it will not send request. So let's say we have a client, we have a GTM box, and we have a pool of DNS server. One, two, three, all are on port 53. So in this case, client will open or request for DNS query. So D GTM will see that does I have wide IP? So it says that I don't have wide IP. Then does listener have a pool? So it will say that yes, I have a pool. So it will load balance DNS query based on a pool of DNS to resolve query. And monitor will determine the availability of server, whether it's up or down. So that is important. So first method is DNS pool in listener in accelerated DNS. So this is first use case. Second use case, which we are disk second use case. So let's discuss second use case now. So second use case of accelerated DNS is which is called DNS Express. So this is also an important feature of GTM. So what does it do is whenever DNS Express is configured, GTM will, when DNS Express is configured, GTM will act as a secondary DNS server. So let's say that we have a client, we have a DNS server, or we can say that LDNS, then we have a GTM. So when DNS Express is configured, so GTM will be acting as a secondary DNS server. So what does it mean is whatever records we are creating, on LDNS or DNS server, it will have zone transfer to and from from GTM to LDNS. So in this case, GTM will be acting as a secondary request or a secondary DNS server and request a zone transfer from a primary DNS server. So local DNS would be acting as a primary DNS server. 
and GTM would be a secondary. Whatever records are been creating on primary DNS server, whenever zone transfer request would happen, GTM will get all records. So in this case, performance on GTM system with DNS Express would be measured by handling hundreds of thousands of requests per second. So in this case, whenever DNS Express is configured, the primary server, so in this case, primary server, which is our LDNS, should allow zone transfer. So we need to enable zone transfer. I will show you how to configure or allow zone transfer in our DNS, which is Linux to the GTM system. And it will notify to the GTM whenever the changes have been made. So this is important. So in DNS Express, whenever we talk about DNS Express, so primary DNS, server let's say this is primary dns and this is our gtm which is secondary so in this case primary dns server should allow zone transfer zone transfer needs to be allowed and whenever some changes or some records have been updated whenever records are been made it will be updated to gtm so that both primary and gtm dns server remains in sync that is main objective here so we have we can have like other features like DNS systems can be configured with transaction signatures, which we are we will talk about in DNS security part. Transaction, which is TSIG key. So this is called transaction signatures. When we discuss later, we will talk about this transaction signature feature. So this is how DNS Express feature. So this is our second use case. So, so far we have discussed in accelerated DNS, we have discussed two use cases. First one is we are using DNS pool bind to listener. Second use case, DNS express. Now third one, we will talk about DNS caching. 